out their sin. They practice it. Practice adultery, covetousness. That's their way of life. In verse 10, in that same chapter, he says, But chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise government, or authority for a better word, presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil to people. So, thirdly, we see by this that their words and conduct publicly display blasphemy to God and perverts Christianity. Gives more people all the more of a reason to point at true believers and say, those guys are liars and hypocrites. In verse 18 in that same chapter, it says, For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they are lured through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escape from them who live in error. So poorly we see these false teachers dangerously mislead people by their counterfeit speeches and their stories for their own selfish gain, their own selfish covetous gain. Peter's promised that their condemnation and destruction and their doom will be their end. As recorded in Revelation 21a, it says, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. And what are false teachers? That is the greatest mark of every false teacher. They're liars. Now, with that in mind, I wanted to go back to what I mentioned earlier in the Old Testament about the Baal worship and Ashtoreth and all that. Just like Peter mentions about the false teachers, the false prophets in the Old Testament, they had their calf worship and their Baal worship and the worship of Ashtoreth, or the goddess of love, if you would. We see the same kind of false teaching and worship being implemented in our church today. <clears throat> For instance, what was the calf in the Old Testament made of? It was made of gold. Today, it's money, bank accounts, credit cards. What is it? It's at the expense of many being taken advantage of by so-called pastors and teachers. And this is the kind of stuff that they're feeding God's people. They're taking it and they're running to the bank along with them. I want my money. But that's not what the Bible's about. That's not what God's Word is talking about. I'm not excluding the fact that we don't need money, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But if your sole purpose is for coming to church is basically for money, it's idolatry. It's sin. And it's blasphemous in the eyes of God. Mark chapter 10, or Mark chapter 10, verse 24, Christ said, How hard it is for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. That's a false teacher for in Luke 12, 15, he says, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Why? What is our treasure? Our treasure. What should be our treasure? Our treasure should be Jesus Christ, the Word of God. Not money. Money will perish, just like everything else in this world will perish. Christ lives eternally. And even more, if you are His, He dwells within you. We know that covetousness is idolatry. Colossians 
And we also know that you cannot serve God and money. Isn't that what Christ said in Matthew 6, 24? You cannot serve God and mammon. Love the one, hate the other, despise the one, serve the other. There's only one Lord, one God, not many. So secondly, we see that bell worship of today is save the trees and the animals, but kill our babies through abortion. And so many have given license to do this based upon their own feelings and their numbness to sin. Yet they don't recognize that their sin is not only based upon murder, but excluding the fact that every baby in the womb is still created in the image of God, 